Many scientists have said that gravity could be a secondary force to the electromagnetic force, but it is hard to see how gravity could be formed out of the ashes of previous electromagnetic systems when light in the form of electromagnetic waves are also bent by gravity. This can be seen in the form of gravitational lensing. In this photo a luminous red galaxy has gravitationally distorted the light from a much more distant blue galaxy. Here the lens alignment is so precise that the background galaxy is distorted into a nearly completely ring. Such lensing effects are known as Einstein's rings. But this effect is almost identical to optical lensing. If we take a laser to represent the light from a distant galaxy and a glass sphere to represent a foreground cluster of galaxies, we can create the same effect. Rings of light can be seen on the surface of the sphere, just like Einstein's rings, and the light is easily bent. This can all be explained by refraction and reflection, but it also has nothing to do with gravity. If the so-called gravitational lensing is formed by a similar process, but on a much larger scale, then there is no reason why the gravitational force cannot be formed by the electromagnetic force. In this theory, gravity is indeed a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. This can be explained in just one equation. Energy equals mass linked to the Lorentz contraction of space and time. Therefore, the greater the energy, the greater the contraction of space, and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this, and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space and time. Light radiating out in all directions at a constant speed, forming a sphere of electromagnetic radiation from its radius, forming a square of probability. Objects just free fall towards the centre of the sphere because it has the slowest rate that time flows, and therefore the greatest energy or mass. Note how this process works in the three dimensions of our everyday life, unlike the diagrams of gravity in the form of a trampoline that are just two-dimensional. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius, thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. The gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light, therefore there is no instantaneous action at a distance. This can explain the great similarities between the equations of the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force. It is because the electrical potential and the gravitational potential are both linked to one universal process that is continuously unfolding at the quantum level of the atoms. In this theory, the quantum of quantum mechanics is a unit of energy that we see and feel as the flow of time itself. Time is continuously being formed photon by photon by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light waves of electromagnetic radiation, a process of continuous change, continuous energy exchange, forming the future uncertainty of everyday life. This uncertainty can be seen mathematically as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle of quantum physics. This might sound mad, but the probability function that forms the uncertainty principle also forms the movement of electric charge, forming the flow of electric current with electrical potential. In this theory, electrical potential and the individual's future potential are the same within their own reference frame. The most advanced part of this universal process is in the form of electrical activity in the brain being able to comprehend and measure this process as the flow of time with a past and uncertain future. This process is totally universal and interactive from the largest object to the smallest creature 
right down to the smallest element of the periodic table, will slow the rate that time flows, forming a curvature of space-time relative to its own energy or mass. If our eyes were more sensitive to the different wavelengths of light, we would be able to see that everything is radiating electromagnetic light waves continuously. This forms a great dance of energy exchange, forming a process of spontaneous and continuous change that we see and feel as the aging process and as the flow of time itself. The second law of thermodynamics falls out of this theory, the organization for the spontaneous disorganization of entropy is formed by the spherical symmetry of the quantum wave particle function. The spontaneous absorption and emission of light forms the flow of time with photon energy cascading down forming greater degrees of freedom for the flow of entropy. We have an infinite number of reference frames within our universe and because light has momentum and momentum is frame dependent each object or observer will have their own reference frame with their own future uncertainty as time unfolds photon by photon therefore an observer can look back in time at the beauty of the stars in all directions from the center of their own reference frame this is because they are forming their own space-time by collapsing the waves of light into new photon oscillations forming their own future potential. An artist will take energy and time to create a work of art because the atoms of the hand and eye have bonded together forming the movement of electric charge creating their own potential future. Creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder in this theory.